Bible prophecy is active and unfolding daily. Zechariah 12, Isaiah 17, Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38. Here is what the lamestream media is not telling you. Hello, my friends, and welcome to this week's newscast. From the New York Times, North Korea has been shipping supplies to the Syrian government that could be used in the production of chemical weapons, including acid-resistant tiles and valves and thermometers, according to a report by UN investigators. North Korean missile technicians have also been spotted working at known chemical weapons and missile facilities inside Syria. Then from the Jerusalem Post, Egypt has increased its forces in Sinai with Israel's agreement stationing some 42,630 soldiers and 800 vehicles in Sinai to fight ISIS there. And from CNN, Guatemalan President Jimmy Morales told AIPAC on Sunday that his country will move its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem in May, two days after the U.S. moves its embassy. Quote, It's important to be among the first, but it is more important to do what is right. Uh, Morales said, we are sure that many other countries will follow in our steps, close quote. <laughs> uh, you know, that remains to be seen, but what, what a sight. You know, it just adds to trouble escalating, my friends. Turning to my personal thoughts, <laughs> I was greatly honored last Thursday night. <laughs> Four years ago, my daughter Michelle graced me with my first granddaughter, Isabella. And then, uh, just this past Thursday night, uh, she graced me once again, she did it again, <laughs> with my second granddaughter. Uh, five days ago, bringing Josephine into this world, whom I plan on calling Little Joe. <laughs> Michelle named um, Isabella after my mom, and uh, she named Josephine after my dad, whose name was Joseph. Now, when I was eight years old, all my dad's friends uh, called me Little Joe. So, um, after looking in the face of this little beauty, I decided I'm going to call her Little Joe. <laughs> in memory of me and my dad. What a wonder, what a joy, what an eternal beracha. And what a time it is to be raising and teaching children. <laughs> if you ask me, parents need to be 300% more diligent than they ever did 50 years ago. We keep seeing how people are disconnecting from each other physically and personally, no longer speaking to each other, even when they're standing right next to each other, texting instead of talking. And now we're seeing how people are speaking to their televisions and to their computers. Siri, what is the definition of anti-disestablishmentarianism? <laughs> and now, the machines are talking back to us. Not only weirdos like Siri, but I just ordered Fios, fiber optics, to replace my cable services to the internet. They sent me an email confirming the order with a link to a video that explains the installation process. So, I click the link, and a video opens up on a web browser, not only addressing me personally by name via text in the video, but also by the narrator's voice in the video. Hello, Alan. You know, <laughs> Even displaying my personal installation day of the week, the time of day, the date, and the month, 
in text and vocally. Pretty soon, we won't know at all if we're speaking with human beings or not. <laughs> Turning to wars and rumors of wars on Tuesday, February 27th, from Sama'a TV, fighting raged on in Syria's eastern Ghouta, making relief operations in the rebel enclave impossible despite a humanitarian pause announced by Russia. Then from Bass News, Turkey's army has deployed fresh troops to the war against Syrian Kurdish uh, People's Protection Units, that's the YPG, in northern Syria's Afrin district. Then on Thursday, March 1st, from Iraqi News, eight ISIS soldiers, including a suicide attacker, were killed in a face-off with paramilitary forces in southern Kirkuk during a military operation to hunt for ISIS soldiers. Then from Fox News, satellite images from Israel's ImageSat show that Iran has built another permanent military base operated by its Quds Force, eight miles northwest of Damascus, complete with hangars used to store short and medium-range missiles capable of hitting all of Israel. Are things stepping up? <laughs> Turning to our Intifada update on Monday, February 26th, from the Jerusalem Post, three Arab Israelis from Um El Fam were indicted for plotting a terrorist attack on the Temple Mount in the name of ISIS. The cell planned to carry out a shooting attack at the Al Aqsa Mosque compound, similar to the attack on July 14th, in which two Israeli police officers were murdered by three Arab Israelis from Um El Fam. Then from Israel Hayom. Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman said last Tuesday that the IDF has been carrying out massive operations in the West Bank to thwart planned terrorist attacks, particularly in and around Hebron. Quote, we are thwarting 20 to 30 terrorist attacks each week, facing ever-increasing terrorist efforts. Close quote. Then on Wednesday, February 28th, from the Times of Israel, IDF soldiers neutralized an IED on the security fence in southern Gaza, which was set up to harm IDF soldiers stationed near the fence. The bomb was similar to one that injured four soldiers just two weeks ago. Then on Sunday, March 4th, from Haaretz, in a car ramming attack in the northern Israeli city of Acre, a jeep hit a border police officer near the city market, then drove on and struck two IDF soldiers near the railway station. The rider, an Israeli Arab, was shot and is in critical condition. Looking at our review of last week's news, North Korea has been shipping supplies to the Syrian government that could be used in the production of chemical weapons. Egypt has increased its forces in Sinai. Guatemala will be moving its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem in May, two days after the U.S. moves its embassy. Fighting continues to rage on in Syria's eastern Ghouta, Turkey's army has deployed fresh troops to the war in northwestern Syria. Eight ISIS soldiers, including a suicide attacker, were killed in a face-off with paramilitary forces in southern Kirkuk. Three Arab Israelis were indicted for plotting a terrorist attack on the Temple Mount in the name of ISIS. The IDF has been carrying out massive operations in the West Bank, thwarting 20 to 30 terrorist attacks each week. Iran has built another permanent military base eight miles northwest of Damascus. IDF soldiers neutralized an IED on the security fence in southern Gaza. 
And in the northern Israeli city of Acre, a jeep hit a border police officer near the city market and then drove on and struck two IDF soldiers near the railway station. And that, my friends, is what the lamestream media is not telling you. <laughs> I'll be willing. I'll see you here again next week. Until then, <laughs> keep your wicks trimmed and keep your lamps ablaze. Shalom, my friends. <laughs>